Hi, in this tutorial, we're just going to do a walkthrough of some of the most basic um, tools in Illustrator and some of the tools you are going to be using for this next assignment. So there are some very big differences between Photoshop and Illustrator that we've already talked about, kind of fundamental differences, but there's also some differences in the tools and um, some of them might be familiar and some of them may not. So we're just going to do kind of an overview. So just like in Photoshop, we have this um, menu that runs along the top and we have this menu at item called window. And this is where you're going to find all your panels. So this is exactly the same as Illustrator. So I think it's always important to have layers open. We're going to build our image in layers just like in Photoshop. Some of this is a bit um, kind of familiar. You can add a layer by using this plus sign. You can also turn off the visibility of a layer and you can also lock and unlock layers. Instead of having a canvas, what you have is something called an artboard. So we're actually going to open up artboards as well. So you can kind of see what you have here. I'm going to put this in there. And if I hit this icon here, um, I can edit the artboard. So the artboard is essentially any element you put on here is what's going to show up in your file when you save it. But um, as if you were on your artist desk, you can also put elements outside of your artboard, just like if you were working in real life and you had all these little elements um, and you didn't choose to put them down onto your paper. So we can edit them based on inches or pixels or there's a bunch of other points and picas and all kinds of interesting um, methods of measurement, but I have it eight by 10 inches. I'm gonna leave it like that. Um, so that's just a quick overview of layers and artboards. Um, let's start creating some in some objects. So I'm going to just go to the shape tool. If I hold it down, if I click and hold, I have some options for different shapes. I can create rectangles. I can create um, ellipses. Um, if I take shift and hold it down, I can make a square. So, or a square. <laughs> A circle. I can do the same thing and get a perfect square as well if I hold down shift. Um, if I want a star, I can set how many points I want it to have and I can have that pop up as well. So I've created a number of shapes. Um, I can use my selection tool at the very top. It is the um, filled in black. It's, if you hover over it, it says selection tool. We don't have the fun little animations that are, um, or videos that show us like how the tool works but it does tell you the name. So we have the selection tool that is black and we have a white sel selection tool called direct selection tool. So, um, and we have shortcuts B and A. So if I want to get to the um, selection tool, I believe it's A, so I can just hit A and it turns white and B and it turns black. So this is a good shortcut to know about. So um, let's just explore this. If we have the, um, black selection tool. It kind of just selects the whole thing. We can scale it. If we hold shift, we can keep the same scale. Um, but we can't really edit individual anchor points with this tool. Whereas with the um, direct select, we can play around with individual anchor points. We can round them um, by pulling on these little circles. Um, that's kind of interesting. Kind of looks weird. We can also choose individual anchor points and stretch them and pull them and move them. Um, you know, even doing something like this and creating some strange negative space. Um, so we can manipulate them that way. Okay. Um, we can also adjust like curves and angles with this tool. So I'm going to go ahead and click here and we see these handles. These are the um, curves that are created. So we can manipulate those as well. So pretty interesting. Let's zoom back out. I'm gonna hit Command Zero to zoom back out. I can also start to play around with something like type. So I'm gonna write the word hello. And then if I wanna change fonts or something like that, I can find the panel for type down here. So T for type. And I'm going to choose character 
and um, our panels are getting a little out of control. Let's collapse some of them. There we go. So I can highlight this and then choose what kind of typeface I want. Maybe I want this bulky one. It's kind of fun. That's kind of fun, baby blue. I'm going to do that one. Let's do... All right. So now I'm going to try to use my direct select tool and try to manipulate some of these. I can't really. It's just moving it around. Because if you look at this, this is actually not a vector object. I can manipulate the box that this is in. I can... You know, scale it, but I, um, you know, make a bigger type box, but these letters are not vector objects. So if I want to make them vector objects, I have a couple of options. I can highlight it and right click and go to create outlines. And now I have these vector objects. Or I can um, go up to object and expand. I'm going to expand both the object to fill, and now I have that as well. I'm not seemingly able to move one letter at a time. That's because these objects are grouped. So if I want to ungroup them, I can go back up to object and ungroup. Once I do that, I can move these freely. Now what if I want to change the color of these? This is the last thing we're going to talk about, and then you can play around with all of these different um, elements. So if I want to change the color of this stuff, um, I can select something like this H and I can double click on the fill and fill it in. So what do you mean by fill? So fill is, um, so if we hover over this box, we get fill. Fill is like filling it in. Stroke is the outline. So let's highlight this and let's go to this other box. Now let's choose a different color, like a contrasting color, like that, and see if anything happens. So this is kind of weird because this letter, the way it was traced, kind of created some strange um, outlines. It's not like very um, clear. I think it's because it's a font that is more of a calligraphy font. So I'm going to go ahead and do a stroke on something else that's a little more normal, and I can see that on there. Um, Go to properties. So properties is something that might probably will already be open. Um, if not, you can find it under P for properties. And so I can turn the stroke up more if I want. I can make it really thick. And then for fill, I'm going to um, choose a different color fill. So sometimes this happens where it just like comes out gray. So what you wanna do is, I'm gonna choose a random color swatch and then choose a color. Sometimes it gets into a most strange mode, kind of a glitch that I've found before. So um, that's how you can play with color. Now, these two tools here are where we're going to go deeper for the next project, the pen tool and the curvature tool. If you want to start playing around with them, they are pretty strange. Um, you can do that, and that's a way you can make custom shapes, and it's actually pretty much the backbone of this program. Um, but it is a little, they are a little complicated, so um, if you want to play around with them, go for it, but we're not going to get too deep into them for this lesson. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that it gave you some food for thought in learning some basics in Adobe Illustrator.